Good evening, televiewers. I'm Cedric Peterson, and welcome to another edition of the National Alliance Television Program. My guest tonight is none other than the leader of the National Alliance, Member of Parliament, William Marlin. Stay tuned. Our conversation with the leader of the National Alliance continues right after this. Follow the white line, down the road, to the polls, gal. Follow the alliance, down the road, and we go forward, gal. Follow the white line, down the road, and we go jam, MP. William Marlin, good evening and welcome to another edition of the National Alliance program. Good evening to you, Cedric. Good evening to the viewers. <coughs> Cedric, it's always a pleasure, you know, to be on this or any program for that matter, uh, because this is an, an opportunity and a way to communicate uh, with the people of St. Martin, letting them know um, how we stand on some of the current issues, letting them know where the Alliance will uh, take them, letting them know what's important um, in this election. Um, what are some of the things that we encounter as we go along on the campaign trail? Let's start there before we get into some of the more hard-hitting issues. How has the camp campaign trail been for you? Well, Cedric, uh, you know, with the, with, the, with the change of the, the laws on campaign financing and the amount um, that businesses can give to any individual political party, uh, for the National Alliance it has been um, you know, an uphill battle as far as campaign financing is concerned. Um, but it also um, puts you smack uh, looking at reality, smack into the face in terms of um, do you really need to have X amount or can you do with this amount? Uh, you know, it's like if, if, if you're going on a vacation, uh, you, can, uh, you, you can fly first class or you can fly economy. If you want to fly economy, um, you're going to get to the same destination. You're going to reach Orlando with your family uh, on the same flight with a guy who, who, you know, who flies first class. But there's a difference in pricing. Um, so therefore, you know, some of our people are very much concerned uh, because we're not seeing enough uh, flags or we're not seeing any, any enough posters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There have been some setbacks. Uh, with, you know, delay in shipment and these kind of things. But on the other hand, uh, it is sort of a conscious decision also that we have taken. Rather than focusing on the glitz and the glamour in the campaign, rather than uh, flying uh, a thousand flags, uh, we have taken on a different approach in this election in our candidates. Um, while you may not see, see them on a hundred posters out there, they have been in the homes of the people, discussing the issues, um, discussing the plans of the National Alliance, and putting things into perspective. And one of the things that well, we are coming across is the amount of uh, deliberate misinformation, lies and slander, um, the, the, the slander that takes place, the things that they tell um, people when they get in their little groups or their little gatherings. Um, one of the things that I've been um, putting up on um, with several people is that, you know, they go so far as to show somebody a document and tell them, um, I, 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 can, I can show you, I can show you where uh, the former minister, um, he had an opportunity to give you a piece of land and he refused to. Mm -hmm. He refused to, the advice was sent to him and he scratched out your name and he put somebody else's name. or. Um, there was a contract to be given for the cleaning of trenches in Dutch Quarter. And now that they can't deliver a contract to a particular uh, contractor in the area or somebody who comes and solicit work, they say, well, um, we would have given it to you, but William Marlin, when he was minister, um, I can show you, I can show you. There was an advice sent to him, and he s deleted your name and put somebody else's name on it. People would not believe that, you know, people in government can go so low and, and, and mislead and misinform and basically lie to the public, lie to the voter simply to get, simply to get their support. A support based on lies, a support based on slander. Um, you know, and these are some of the issues that we encounter. 
Remarkably also, <clears throat> I've met several young men, uh, young people, um, after our first uh, successful and grand public meeting in, in um, the soccer garden area. After the meeting, this young man came up to me and said that he could have voted four years ago, but he didn't because he simply did not know it was his first time voting. He didn't know what he should look for in a political party. He didn't know what to look for in the individual candidates and the impression that was being created, you know, that um, politics uh, wasn't good. So he did not vote in 2010. And he said this year he decided he will vote, but um, he didn't know who to vote for or why to vote. So he's been going to different meetings, and he said, and, and you know, it, it might sound like a little propaganda for William Marlin, but he said, um, after listening to you speak, he said, I was convinced, I found my candidate, I found my party. He said, so I want you to know you have my support uh, moving forward. Um, and the following day at a gas station, one of the gas attendants, he called out at me and he wanted to speak. And again, basically the same type of thing that um, we young people, uh, we don't know what it's about because you're seeing so much out there, you're hearing so much out there, but you can't break it down. So you know, the National Alliance Youth Wing is preparing a youth conference that will be held towards, I think it's the 24th of July, so next week, um, that the 24th of August, so next week we will have the president of the youth wing, um, Rihnal Bakari Arundel, will be on the program and he will be, you know, addressing um, the reason for it and how to go about it. But Young people, young people, uh, some of those that we meet on the trail that are very much confused. And you have um, the amount of social problems that are plaguing our people, uh, people that can't, simply can't balance their budget. And when I say balance their budget, it is not a matter of um, we, we, we are overspending, but how do you survive with six or seven hundred dollars a month to take care of a family, um, to provide housing and, and, and put food on the table. How, how do you do that? And you know, one of the things that the, up, um, the UP party wanted to throw at, at the campaign, it's like um, their, 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 their showcase was uh, the causeway. Um, but you know, we've been addressing this even before it was inaugurated. And we are not saying that, hey, um, it is totally useless, but it comes with a price tag. The impression is being created like somebody gave a gift to the people of St. Martin. You know, it would be like um, if I gave something to the St. Peter's community, I, I donate something to them, and they should be grateful that I donated something. So the impression is being created. Um, the UP party or the leader of the UP party gave something to St. Martin. No, what the UP party did was create a serious problem for the economy of this country. Um, the whole manner in which, okay, that, that, that has been my, one of my problems all along as a member of parliament at the time as well. Um, well, I'm still a member of the parliament, but here you have a major uh, a project being undertaken that was not approved or debated in the island council, um, that was not, you know, a discussion in parliament other than if it comes up um, in a discussion. And lo and behold, um, via a sneaky way, okay, because you, you can't be talking open government, transparency, democracy, um, integrity, and then you sneak behind people's back and do something and tell them, I'm doing something good for you. It is for you, I'm doing it for you. And then when you go find out, after the whole uh, thing is unveiled, uh, after the contracts are signed and after it becomes a, a, a fait accompli, that in order to carry it out, you increase the throughput fee on fuel. So 
electricity bills across the board. For the poor man and woman who you want to give relief to today, um, their electricity bill gone up. Not only theirs, everybody, every business, every store, every church, every school. Electricity bill gone up because of the fuel clause. Then you increase the container's fee. Everything we consume on this island is imported via containers. Um, so you increase the price of the containers. What does the businessman do? He passes on. Anytime there's an increase, he passes it on to the consumer. Who are the consumers? We. Everybody. The, 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 the grandmother or the single mother in Dutch Quarter, uh, the young man in Middle Region, uh, the young lady in Cold Bay, uh, the family in St. Peter's, all of us have to pay. You want to buy the shirt, the price gone up. You want to buy a pair of socks, the price gone up. You want to buy a can of milk, the price gone up. You want to buy a pound of chicken, the price gone up. So it was no gift. It is no gift to the people of St. Martin, but the people of St. Martin were forced to pay for something they didn't ask for, for a politician to run around the island with and say, you see, I make promises and I deliver on my promises. No. If it's a gift, then you can give people a gift without asking them, what do you want? But if it's something that I have to pay for, I think I have a right to decide whether I want it and how much I'm going to pay for it. So it's the same thing you have with several other things that are taking place right now, um, you know, in government that is affecting the people and is part of the discussion that is taking place in the campaign. You're just tuning in. You're viewing the National Alliance television program, and my guest tonight is the leader of the National Alliance, Honorable Member of Parliament, Mr. William Marlin. Newspaper article headlined on Wednesday, on Thursday, August 14, 2014, states Pelican Resort or Pelican Property null and void. Well, that wanted to see this particular issue through your eyes. Cedric, it's, it's one of those things as we tape, you know, the program. Um, it's airing today, Monday, but we taped it just after, you know, we, we saw this, so there might be some new developments by the time this program is aired. But um, for some, it was like, we told you so. Um, things didn't go down right. Um, but what is more interesting is what are the consequences? Because here we see, um, we have institutions that we have put in place. Um, within our democracy, we have institutions that carry certain responsibilities, that carry responsibilities um, given to them by government, and they have certain rules, regulations, guidelines that they have to follow. And one would imagine that people who took an oath you know, to, to do their job, that they would be doing their job, let's say, the correct way. A mistake can happen anywhere um, because nobody's perfect, nobody's God. Um, but one would wonder um, how far do these mistakes go? From what I analyze, uh, from what I've read um, and, and understood so far, what you've had is that the company that wanted to buy Pelican, um, Pelican owed them an amount of money and they decided to auction Pelican basically for the amount of the money owed by Pelican. So the new buyers, the buyers of Pelican, uh, they decided to get with notary apparently instead of depositing, which is required by law, 30 million in an account, that would then make the auction uh, valid because there are conditions for the auction. Because just like uh, they bought it, it could have been somebody else. So the conditions of the auction stipulate that the purchase price should be deposited in an account. Upon closing, the notary would have to verify, yes, the purchase price is there, it is paid, it is transferred, and then you collect, let's say, the 30 million, and you have creditors that you owe. Um, and in this case, the 30 million that you owe is to the same company that bought it. So rather than following the conditions of the auction, they decided to do their own little thing. So the court 
has annulled uh, the sale, the, the auction that took place. Um, what is also said is that the notary, the former notary, um, is responsible for um, the liability. So they got to whatever uh, damage that has that was suffered by those who 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 suffer damage they would have to the notary is responsible now what amount that is we don't know but what has been point of discussion also is how does that affect the workers because the workers were working for pelican pelican was supposedly sold to another company and that company said well hui bu we can't take all of you. We can only take some of you. As a matter of fact, they didn't. At one point, it was like, all of you got to go. Then we will offer some a contract or whatnot. So if the sale was null and void, then Pelican supposed to be retroactively, let's say, the owners. And then um, how did you dispose of your workers? So the end of this, we may not hear you know, um, anytime soon. But tied to that, Cedric, also is another issue that we spoke about recently, which is the entire matter. Well, we had a parliament meeting about the cadastre report, and that's where I brought it up. Um, you have the issue with, this, with the auction of the caravanserai. Um, the owner of the caravanserai sold uh, two parcels of land um, to a developer, um, apparently received $1.5 for this and because um, uh, Caravanserai is built on government lease land, the minister had to give, uh, had, had to agree for, for Caravanserai owner to transfer the long lease to a new owner. That did not happen. The notary did not verify that that paperwork was there. So what you get? Um, the notary transfers the, 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 the property to a new owner. They go to Cadaster, it is registered. Cadaster also doesn't realize that that didn't take place. And now there's an auction on the remaining property of Caravanserai. And the bank says, no, you have to auction the entire property because I have a mortgage on the property. How could you sell or transfer property that I have a mortgage on? They went to court, I think now it's three times. And not too long ago, last week, the court ruled that Caravanserai um, was not authorized to transfer this property. What we saw Maurice Lake, Minister Maurice Lake, tried to help out the situation uh, to the benefit of those who, who, who bought the property. Um, tried to help them out by um, agreeing to the transfer that should have been done since 2011, I think it is, when this thing started. So here again, we see a major problem, a major problem because of those who in a particular authority um, do things and don't follow uh, the books. Another issue that is, you know, that has to do with land also um, is the leader of the UP party when he was minister, apparently signed a resolution authorizing the owners, uh, not the owners, the, 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 those who had um, government land and long lease of uh, Monte Vista to, it's like giving them full authority to sell the land even though there are no buildings on them, there is nothing. Um, so. This land is now going on sale for something like 300 and something thousand dollars for a, for a lot, while they have it on long lease from government for much less money. Um, so there are a lot of things that are very, very much questionable and people you know, are talking about these things as we go along. One of the other issues um, that we're also seeing coming up is the development now proposed for the infamous Borst um, property and land argument that you had presented in Parliament. Um, what is your take now on this proposed project that uh, was published in the paper of Thursday, August 14, 2014? Well, you know, just before this, um, uh, earlier in the week, mm -hmm. um, last week I called on Minister Maurice Lake to come clean um, with the people and tell them exactly 
uh, where this 10 million that he wants to use to purchase divorced uh, estate, divorced property, 11,200 square meters, and where this money is coming from. And I outlined that several projects that when I was minister, we had approved the upgrading of the road in Dutch Quarter, um, the connecting of the sewage line in St. Peter's to the sewage plant, and therefore the secondary connections, which is from the homes to the sewage line, can take place. Um, uh, uh, upgrading and beautification in Cahill, and an upgrade of the sewage lines in South Reward Homes also. These four projects were scrapped. Um, so that the minister can have 10 million now to go purchase the divorce property. Um, besides him looking to take the money from there, the purchase of the divorce property was never properly approved. Uh, he is saying he's basing it on an agreement former Minister of Justice Roland Duncan had, but that agreement clearly stated that if I don't get the financing, our agreement is null and void. So the agreement was null and void. So you pick up an agreement that Roland Duncan was negotiating for a lease for 60 years, and you're saying, hey, if the lease had gone through for 60 years, it would have cost so much, I'm going to now buy it outright for this amount. No, if you're going to purchase it, you have to purchase it for the market value. So his latest thing now is a response to you see what I'm going to do? This is what I was purchasing the property for. We are not talking about what you was purchasing the property for, but the procedures followed to purchase the property are incorrect, and the price is just outrageous. But the minister, we can basically say, it lied. Because when he was in parliament, he said, the land is being purchased for social housing. On Thursday last week, the minister released now his intentions for the property saying it's for it's to build home for young professionals who are returning home so no longer social housing and a, 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 a sewing center and a call center you just go on the internet download a picture put it out there and say this is going to be um, a sewing center this is going to be a call center and um, these are apartments, two and three bedroom apartments, condos that we would sell. No matter where the minister goes and download any amount of images, the whole thing is shady. It is lacking seriously in transparency and it does not make sense. To purchase land for $500 a square meter is just unheard of and not the correct way for any minister to behave. So therefore, Minister Maurice Lake has to come clean and deal with the people above the table. Thank you very much, MP Bun and Marlin, for taking this time to sit down and talk to us and bringing us up to speed on the various issues that are affecting the people of St. Martin. And thank you to our television viewers for tuning in and being a part of another edition of the National Alliance Program, a program that focuses on bringing you, the people of St. Martin, the issues that are affecting you directly, and of course to bring you the ideas and proposals that the National Alliance will be dealing with as we look forward to your support in the 2014 parliamentary elections. Until our next, in next interview and our next guest on the program, thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.
better come straight up. This is an emergency. A party that's striving to put our country first. So that we line up and line straight up to cast the vote. So show me where you wave your heart. The alliance will never be part. Once you straight with them all the time and focus. Let we follow the alliance. Don't be bold to cast your vote. Chipper, we go follow the 